This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Casey Jacobson steps in for the Cougars. We go to the fourth. Cougars still looking for a run here. They've left uh, six on base through the first three innings. Jacobson fouls that pitch straight back. A ball and a strike to the Cougar third baseman who struck out his first time up. Broncos on the strength of the Grand Slam home run in the first inning lead this one four to nothing. Here's the 1-1 pitch. That's outside for ball two. When you look at uh, Russell Grant, uh, two wins, four losses on the year. This is his 15th appearance, his 10th start. 61 innings pitch, 49 strikeouts, 25 walks. That pitch is way outside for ball three. You know, the numbers aren't bad. The ERA isn't, isn't horrible. You know, and this team ERA isn't as bad as you would think when you look at their record. It's definitely been on the offensive side of the ball where they have struggled. 3-1 pitch. Jacobson takes that one up high. So the Cougars with a leadoff walk here in the fourth. They're just looking to break through here with some hits with guys on base as uh, Carson Matthews will step in. Wind has now changed again, blowing directly out to left field. Second baseman, Carson Matthews. So Matthews steps in. He walked his first time up on four pitches. And the first pitch to Carson is a curveball that drops in for a strike. Mike Littlewood down in the third base coaching box in his seventh year for the Cougars. 213 wins, 157 losses. For the Cougar coach. And there's a curveball that's down low. Ball and a strike to Matthews, who's kind of taken over that second base job, done a great job defensively. Hitting 260 on the year with 17 RBIs for Matthews. Now had uh, this will be his 96th at bat of the year. Curveball again, a strike. It is just breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball, and then show the fastball. Matthews with uh, two doubles, a triple, and two home runs on the year. And he fouls that pitch off. See, that's a fastball again. That would have been a ball on the inner half. But uh, Cougar hitters right now are just so excited to see a fastball that they're swinging at every one, even if they're not strikes. And you get behind, and I think you get yeah, a little anxious you to do. play, you trying really, to do too much. You really do. Here's the one-two to Matthews. Popped up. Second baseman coming in. He shall Shea, and he makes the catch for the out. One man out, and that will bring Jelich to the plate. Uh, Danny grounded out to the third baseman his first time Center out. Fielder, Danny Jelich. So the Cougars have left six men on. They've been the recipients of a couple of walks. They have four base hits, but just haven't been able to drive anybody across. First pitch ball to Jelich. Yeah, should have scored a run on the double that Brock hit, but uh, kind of a bad read by Sue. And was only able to move up to third and then a walk and back-to-back outs, and he didn't score anything. Jelich hammers this one pretty well. Center fielder over, goes back a couple of steps. He's there, makes the catch for the out. So Danny hit it hard, but uh, Cam Alley out there in center field able to make the catch. Big center fielder, 402 feet away. Yeah, you got to keep the ball out of the air if you're trying to hit it in the center. A lot of ground out there to go get it. Now batting the leadoff hitter. First baseman, Brian Sue. Brian Sue now steps in. Brian, two for two. A single and a double. His double down the third base line. And the first pitch to Sue is down low. Have you ever seen a third baseman play closer to the bag? No. I early mean, in a ball game? It's crazy. He's one step from the line, and even with the bag. Connor Hendricks right on top of the bag. As Sue takes a curveball over for a strike, leaves a huge hole between himself and the shortstop. And the shortstop really doesn't play a very deep shortstop in the six hole. Here's the 1-1, one, one. up high, ball two.
Cougars have had their leadoff runners on in the first, third, and again here in the fourth, but have been unable to push anybody across yet. 2-1, and that ball's fouled over near the BYU dugout. 2-2 two two the count to uh, Brian Sue, San Ramon, California native, playing his senior year for BYU. Here's the pitch to Sue, and that ball is grounded foul down the third baseline. I'll tell you one thing, he does not want to get beat down the line. <laughs> Huge six hole. You can just hit a four hopper that can get through there for a hit. Santa Clara team with 21 newcomers on the team, including 14 freshmen. Complete rehaul. That pitch, I think it hits Sue. He'll go down to first base. Didn't. Couldn't tell where it got him, so the Cougars will have runners at first and second base now on a hit batter. Jacobson was uh, moving on the pitch. Yeah, he was. On the 2-2 count. Now Rusty Filter, the head coach. Been a pitching coach his entire life until these last couple of years, and uh, I'll tell you, he has uh, tutored some of the great pitchers in collegiate baseball. Boy, has including he ever. Uh, Steven Strasburg yeah. and then a bunch of kids that came out of Stanford the last few years. Yeah, he was the pitching coach when we played them in the in the regional a couple years ago, and they threw a lefty at us that he's not going to light up the radar gun. He was like 83 to 86, but he threw four pitches for a strike, when and where. And you look at the guys, the numbers that that lefty had on the season. It was like a below three ERA with double strikeouts to innings pitched, and it's like and he's 83 to 86. Well, he two, could just pitch. The two top uh, guys that he's uh, coached, of course, Strasburg, the number one pitch by the National, is in 09, and then Mark Appel, who was at Stanford, he was the number one pick. And uh, both both those guys, uh, dynamic pitchers, collegiate pitchers, and Strasburg has gone on to have a fantastic pro career. And Noah Hill now steps in with runners at first and second base. Two men out, and Hill takes the pitch over for a strike. Noah had a bunt single in the first, lined out sharply to the shortstop his last time up. Yeah, just, need a, just need a big knock here. Two out knock, which we've been so good at this year. They scored 42% of our runs this year with two outs. And get Brock Hill up a chance to keep going here. Russell Grant's pitch. And a check swing went around. And Hill behind in the count 0-2. Got a battle. He can go to anything here. Got a battle. Get yourself a breaking ball that's elevated and punch it through that six hole. No balls, two strikes, two outs, two on. And here is Grant's pitch, and that's up a little bit high for a ball. Ooh, close take right there. A little too close for my liking. Well, Noah's had some big at-bats this year in this situation. Need another one right here. Brock Hale on deck, and then he'll be followed by Clough. As Grant rocks and fires, and he, Noah Hill checks a swing, but went around, goes out, strikes out to end the inning for the Cougars. They leave two more on base. No runs, no hits, and no errors. We are through three and a half, four nothing, Santa Clara over BYU on your. New Skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Brent Norton. Broncos will send Tony Boetto to the plate. He's the number seven hitter in the lineup. He singled his first time up. Broncos lead this 4-0 as we play the bottom of the fourth. We are in Santa Clara, California. The 1-0 pitch is down low, ball two. Wind blowing. It's uh, pretty cool here in the Bay Area. Popped up. Might be playable. First baseman coming over. And the wind's got it. And uh, Noah Hill made the play. Incredible play by Hill. I thought that ball was Sue's all the way, but the wind kind of brought it back toward Hill. And Hill right in front of the dugout. A little Willie Mays basket catch there. Great play by Noah. Noah. 
One man out. Connor Hendricks steps in. He struck out his last time up. And the first pitch, little looper, center field. Gillette's coming hard. He is not going to get there. Lands in front of him. So Connor Hendricks with a one-out single. And that will bring Dawson Brigman to the plate. Brigman will step in. He is a 5'11", 160-pound freshman right here out of San Jose. He will bat from the right side with a runner at first base. One man out, and here is the pitch from Jordan Wood, and that is over for a call strike. A yeah, good pitch right there for Wood. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Wood. Just off the plate. Last year, uh, Santa Clara had four players selected in the Major League Draft. Eighth eighth round was the right-handed pitcher Stephen Wilson. Jake Brote, an infielder, was chosen in the ninth round. John Cresto, an infielder, was chosen in the 28th round. And Penn Murphy, 33rd round by the Mariners. He was also a right-handed pitcher. There goes the runner. Throw down, throw a little bit high, but uh, no, he slides in safely. Uh, throw tough. to the second base side, and uh, Connor Matthews just couldn't get back and make the tag. Yeah, no, just throws that to the bag. He's out by a mile, but threw it up the ba- threw it up the line towards the first base line, and Carson had to get it and reach back, and he slides in safe because of it. That's Hendrick's fifth stolen base in seven attempts. As Brigman steps in again with a 1-2 count. And here is the pitch. Swing and a miss. Ball dropped by Hill, but he'll come up and fire to first for out number two. A good block there by Noah. And freezing the runner, not letting him go to third and throwing the guy out. Cam Alley, he's two for two today. A pair of singles. In the first and the second inning, as he steps in here in the fourth, the Broncos have had hit the Cougars 6-4 in the ballgame. Cougars have left eight men on the base pass in four innings here this evening. And Jordan Wood trying to get Alley out for the first time here in the ballgame. And here's Wood's first pitch. Ground ball foul down the third base side you know we talked about the RPI a little bit and uh, this uh, Santa Clara team one of the worst teams in the country RPI wise boy you you lose to them or you beat them here and you and you drop you lose to them you're going to probably drop uh, substantially yeah, it's a, it's a lose lose situation this weekend you win you lose points you win and if you lose you lose even more points it's tough here's the 01 swing and a miss 0 and 2 well, Wood not with his great stuff, especially early, but he's he's battling out there. He really is. After, you know, getting blitzed there in the first with the one big swing and really got himself in his own trouble there, he's uh, doing a good job. He's got he's to get back in this dugout right here with another zero here in the fourth. On to the count. And the pitch runner going. Throw down, and this time they're going to get him. As uh, I'm not sure Connor Hendricks trying to steal third base with two men out. Not sure how smart that is, but Cougars will take it as they are retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. We are through four complete now, 4 nothing. The Broncos over the Cougars on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Brock Hell steps in, 2-0 the count. Brock one for two, doubled his last time up off the right field wall, and he had a big swing and a miss on the pitch. It looked like it was off the plate, two and one to count. Yeah, just completely pitching backwards right now. Two and oh, goes change up running away. 
2-1 pitch. Hale hits this ball. Left field. Left fielder going back. And he is there and will make the catch for the out. So one man out here in the fifth for BYU, and that will bring uh, Clough to the plate. Jackson has uh, flown to left and walked in the game. So the lefty, Russell Grant, has done a great job against this Cougar batting order as he limited to no runs, four hits through the first four, and the first pitch to Jackson Clough is over for a strike. And, boy, you let a guy get on you a little bit, and uh, you can just see the confidence building every inning. Pitches up high, ball one. Oh, yeah, he's throwing a three-pitch mix in there, kind of do what he wants. He's been pitching out of trouble. He feels like he can beat anybody right now. Grant up to 76 pitches now in the fifth. Curve ball drops in again for a strike. One and two the count. Jackson. That pitch is outside for a ball. Abe Valdez is coming out in the on-deck circle, so he'll take over in the DH role for Sapiti. And the 2-2, that pitch inside for ball three. So Sapiti struck out looking his first two times up there. And Valdez has now been put in the lineup with a right-handed bat. And the 3-2, and that ball fouled back into the screen. Same two teams tomorrow. Game time tomorrow, same time, but there is talk of maybe a double header tomorrow due to it's supposed to be terrible weather here Saturday, so they're thinking about playing two, and we will know after the ball game. Good about right there by Clough as he works his way on with a walk. That'll bring up Abe Valdez to the plate. He'll come in and pinch hit. Yes, if he didn't have... Didn't really look very good at all in his first two at-bats, so can go to Valdez, who's actually been a really good pinch hitter this year. So hopefully he can light a spark here for this offense that, hey, has had plenty of chances. Like you said, eight ace runners now. This is our ninth base runner that's been on base. First pitch to Valdez. Curveball on the inside corner for a strike. Abe Valdez... On the years, had uh, 47 at bats, 13 hits, 17 or uh, 12 RBIs, 17 total bases. So Valdez, a uh, junior out of San Diego, steps in there with a 0 1 count. And Russell Grant, the lefty, throws another one to first, Ooh. almost threw it away. First baseman uh, McNichols had to go. Dive over the top of uh, the base runner, Jackson Clough, to make that catch. Grant from the pitch, and uh, Valdez takes a curve ball. Checked his swing. Up, called a strike. 0-2. Boy, he's having a lot of success with that curve ball against he right-handed is. hitters. He is. He keeps throwing that down and in on him. Here's the 0-2. That's a pitch out, and the runner's going to move up. They thought Clough was going to run, and uh, that was a pitch out that was uh, way wide of the catcher who was standing in the um, left-handed uh, batter's box. So the Cougars with another runner in scoring position. And Valdez with an RBI opportunity here. Opportunity to get the Cougars on the board. And the pitch way inside for ball two. Another breaking ball right there. McIntyre is on deck. And you look at Russell Grant. I mean, this kid, not a real power, you know, 41 strikeouts, 61 innings, 25 walks. So, But uh, he's certainly had it going here tonight. 2-2 two, two to Valdez, ground ball out to the shortstop. He's got it. Bobbles it, comes up and still makes the throw for the out, Brigman. 
as the runner uh, Clough moves to third base on the ground out. And that will bring McIntyre up with an RBI opportunity. Mitch was up there in the last time up with bases loaded and uh, flew out to left field. So Mitch 0 for 2 on the day and the first pitch to McIntyre, and that's a fastball over for a strike. And he is really, like you said, kind of pitching backwards here and doing a good job of just keeping the Cougars off balance. Yeah, he really is doing a good job. And he's pitching better with guys in on base. Almost hit McIntyre. Way high and tight. And the count goes to a ball and a strike. Cougars uh, next week will be in the conference tournament. They are, no matter what happens this weekend, they have qualified for that. Pitch to McIntyre's up high ball two. They would love to win the regular season championship. And uh, depending on what happens here and what happens with Gonzaga down at uh, LMU will determine the regu- who wins the regular season crown. Ball fouled off if the Cougars do lose here tonight, and if Gonzaga were to sweep, then they would win win the regular season because they hold the tiebreaker yeah, against BYU. We would we would tie with them, but they would get the one seed. So you're considered the champ just like they were two years ago and three years ago when we tied back-to-back years. But they would get the one seed. That's Cougars correct. have never been the undisputed regular season champ in the conference. There's the curveball. McIntyre goes down on strikes. And the Cougars again leave another runner on base. No runs, hits, or errors. One man left. We're through four and a half. Four nothing. Broncos over the Cougars. We're going to listen. To, we're going to play, uh, share with you Mike Littlewood's interview right before the ball game. We are here with head coach Mike Littlewood uh, for the last series of the year, coach. Uh, boy, it's flown by. And here we are again battling the elements. Uh, it seems like we've been doing that the whole year. Yeah, it's uh, something we're, we're used to, and it takes a little bit of patience to sit through the rain, and our team's veteran enough, been around enough to not really panic about that, and uh, if they say we're going to play, we're going to play, but it looks good for now, at least for another uh, couple hours, it looks pretty good. Coach, uh, big win against Utah Tuesday night. Boy, tight game 2-2, and you kind of blew it up, blew it open at the end, and uh, just a great effort by your entire team, as we've seen the whole year. Yeah, I mean, I think the uh, mantra of this team, or maybe the one word is perseverance. Um, that's what we've done. We've, we've been behind a bunch and won. I think we've been behind in game 17 times and, and won them. Um, so we just don't give up, you know, and we feel confident we can score. Our pitching staff really helps keep it, keep the other team in check and uh, gives us confidence just to be able to, to come back a little bit. So it was good. Well, the series down here in Santa Clara, you've really dominated these guys. You won the last 10 uh, in conference play, won six of the last seven series against the Broncos. Uh, Kind of a little bit of a trap series. I mean, it's one you've got to get there in the yeah. bottom of the uh, of the uh, conference. You're at the very top, uh, but they're important games for BYU. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a little bit scary playing a team that's really relaxed and uh, really has nothing to play for, nothing to lose except for pride. And so um, it, you, the worry you have there is that your team's going to be tight, but I don't see that tonight at all. I, I feel like we have a good mentality and guys are loose, but yet uh, focused on what the on the task at hand. You got one. I'll- this is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Top of the order for Santa Clara as we go to the bottom of the fifth, Cami Alley. Two for two on the day, and uh, first two pitches down low from Jordan Wood. Jordan now up to 75 pitches as we play the bottom of the fifth inning here in California. The ball fouled off. They've got a screen here all the way around the ballpark uh, except for the home uh, home run 12-foot wall. So nothing really gets out of this ballpark if you hit a foul. A little reminiscent of San Francisco, only they, they go all the way around the field. There's a ground ball. Carson Matthews is second. has got it. Throw to first for the out. Yeah, you're right. It does remind me a ton of USF except for in the outfield, right? There's a parking lot over yep. there, so it's safe over there. Yep. One man out, top of the or, uh, number two hitter. 
Chico Sheehan will step in. He has uh, been hit by a pitch and grounded into a double play. And the first pitch from Jordan Wood on the outside corner for a strike. Tough uh, left field right now defensively for McIntyre, looking right back into that sun. And here is Wood's 0-1 pitch, ground ball. Two hops. Uh, Casey Jacobson's got it and will throw him out. Two men down and Andrew Nebe will step in. Boy, interesting. One swing of the bat in That's this all ball it is, game. Yeah. yeah, a single and then a hit by pitch and a walk. Two, and you know, two big plays. The, yeah. the, the hit by a pitch, which was a disputed. Right yeah. Andre Nebe. And then... The walk. Yep. And uh, then the grand slam as uh, Jordan Wood just left to pitch up in the zone. In a ballpark right now that's uh, hit the ball to the left, you're going to get a little help. And he really got a lot of help back then. It's not blowing nearly as hard here right now. That's how close this game can be sometimes, Brent. Just a, an inch here or there, and that's the difference. Here's the 0-1. That's over for call strike two. DeBay is uh, walked and struck out in the game. And here is Jordan Wood's pitch. That's down low. Ball and two strikes now to the right fielder for the Broncos with uh, McNichols on deck. Here's Woods, 1-2, up a little bit high. Mark Marquis, the old head coach, uh, 40-year coach at uh, Stanford, is working here at Santa Clara under the athletic director. So he retired last year, and now he's, uh, I think, uh, come out of kind of a semi-retirement and helping the Broncos with their athletic program pitches down low ball three surprised that Stanford wouldn't have hired him Marquis of course Rusty Fielder the head coach here yep. was the pitching coach for Marquis for the last uh, few years of Marquis's career 3-2 ground ball right at Clough uh, Jackson's got it and he'll throw him out and the bay as you mentioned big kid but can really run so Jordan Wood with a perfect inning. We're through five, four nothing. Broncos continue to lead the Cougars on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Brent Norton. Ballpark as Casey Jacobson steps in, one and all the count on the Cougar third baseman. Jacobson fouls that one up off his foot. As... Uh, Rain starting to come down. Big rainbow right over the outfield wall. That's pretty cool. All the way from right over center field uh, back over the left field uh, foul pole as uh, Jacobson trying to walk that one off. Well, maybe the rain can, the rain and the rainbow can give us a little bit of offensive yeah, luck yeah, here. Maybe that's a maybe that's a good sign. Yeah, Still a little bit of sun showing, shining also, but it's it's raining pretty well here. And rain on and off, especially uh, forecast Saturday for heavy rain. So that's why they're talking about maybe playing the doubleheader tomorrow. If that if they did decide to do that, I think they've decided to uh, 3 o'clock start, which would be uh, 4 o'clock in Provo, and we'll have both those games for you if they are do decide on the doubleheader. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Uh, Jacobson swings and misses for a strike. Just need a spark. Brent is all it takes. Jacobson hits this ball pretty well. Left fielder looking up, going back. He's on the wall, and this ball is out of here. Just Casey need a spark. Jacobson. Well, that's a pretty good spark. That a boy. Lead off home run here in the sixth inning. Casey's fourth home run of the year. And the Cougars finally on the board here against uh, Russell Grant on the solo shot. Well, we were able to do that because nobody was on base, right? That's the difference. (laughs) 
Well, hopefully well, that's can, what it seems like. Hopefully I can loosen up the hitters here. A lot of baseball left. Second baseman, Carson had a big meeting in the uh, dugout between half innings there, and uh, now Matthews steps in, pops it up. Easy play for the shortstop, uh, Brigman, who makes the play for out number one. Ah, Carson is so frustrating as a hitter sometimes. He just gets himself out on bad pitches because he's over-aggressive. That's a ball running away from him, up and away. That's probably going to be ball one, and he swings it and pops it up right after a home run. It's like you got a chance to gain a little momentum there. Don't be so aggressive. Jelich now steps in. Danny is grounded out and also flown out. 0 for 2 today, and the first pitch to Jelich is over for a strike. 97 pitches now by uh, Russell Grant in the ball game. As Jelich uh, pops that one up and out of play. You know, that rainbow is absolutely incredible. I wish I could take a picture of it, but I don't think uh, pitchers uh, do rainbows any good. But it's, it's, it's raining the, pretty it, hard. <laughs> but that is just the brightest rainbow I've ever seen over that uh, outfield wall. Ball hit hard. That is a fair ball right down the third baseline. It goes into the bullpen. That will be a double for Jelilich. Tells you how hard that ball was hit. He hugs the line. I mean, he hugs the line, had to dive. Ricochets off his glove. So Jelilich with a double, a one-out double, and the Cougars have scored one in the inning. They now have six base hits to... Even the amount of hits in the ball game with Santa Clara, and that will bring Brian yeah, Sue up. Uh, Sue has singled, doubled, and been hit by a pitch in the game. Rain uh, continuing to come down lightly here in the ballpark, and the first pitch to Sue is inside ball one. Noah Hill is in the on deck circle for the Cougars. As Brian steps back in there, and he hammers one third baseman up and off his foot, and he will not make the throw. I think that'll be an error on the third baseman, uh, Hendricks, and the Cougars will take it. They hit that ball hard, and once they hit that dirt, it took a kind of a wicked hop up and hit off his thigh. Sue's good speed. There's no chance to get him out, so smart job there not throwing that. I and noticed uh, Santa Clara has the lowest fielding percentage in the league at 960. Compare that to the uh, Cougars, 973. And now Noah Hill. He's had a rough game. He had a bunt single in the first and lined out in the third, struck out in the fourth inning. Noah got to get uh, something in play here. Well, again, third baseman is playing in and kind of hugging that line, so there's a huge six hole here. There's a squares to bunt. Takes the pitch up high. Looked like the... Runners were almost going to be going there. And they appeal it back to Why? the first base umpire who calls a strike. I'm not going to say anything. You know how I get. Yeah, I've seen you that way a little bit. Yeah, I'm not going to say anything. No balls and a strike to Noah. His second time up really hit the ball hard, but right at the shortstop, uh, Brigman. And here's the 0-1, and that's up a little bit high, a ball and a strike. Well, from our vantage point, it's hard to tell who they have in the bullpen. I'm assuming Can't someone's see. going. Somebody's because, got to be going over you know, 100 pitches yeah. now. Well, this is your chance to get right back in the game. One and one, here's the pitch, and Hill hits this ball out toward the shortstop. Under the glove, that'll be another error. Cougars are going to score another run, and they'll have runners at the corners. Brigman came hard on a ball not hit hard. Cougars very fortunate right there. Yeah, definitely a break right there. It wouldn't have been a double play ball because it wasn't hit hard enough, but I'm thinking that Jelic running in his face there going to third Maybe got the yeah. shortstop kind of off his rhythm. I agree. And he looked up a little bit, and it goes underneath his glove. And now you got first and third with Brock Hill up. Two big errors by Santa Clara here in the top of the sixth. You got a chance to really make it hurt right here. Cougars have scored two. They've got runners at first and third. One man out. Brock Hill steps in. Brock has struck out, doubled, and flew out the left his last time up. 
Here is Russell Grant's first pitch. Curveball drops in knee high for a strike. Boy, I tell you what, that was a pitch right there. Hale leads the Cougars with 11 home runs. 44 RBIs is the 0-1 pitch. Fastball outside for a ball. Well, the outfield's playing as deep as they possibly can. Sue at third. Noah Hill at first base. And Brock Hill fouls this one off, and he's behind in the count now, one and two. This is if you're Brock Hill, just do what you do best. Put a ball in play, hit a ball hard, hit something in the outfield, at least score a run, cut this to a one-run game. And who knows, maybe you get a hanger here and you hit a three-run shot. We've seen that before, too. One and two, Hale takes the pitch inside, ball two. Ooh. Close pitch. Tried to sneak a fastball by him, but you never know with Ruben, so I'm glad he called that one ball. It was a close pitch. Hard to tell from our point because we're a little off center here. Grant now up to 107 pitches. Pitch to Hale. Strike three wow. called on a curveball. Wow, that ball's Looked like the pitch, pitch was up a little bit. But Hale goes down on strikes. Two men out, and that'll leave it up to Clough here. Big strike out right there by uh, Russell Grant. I think that was like a makeup call. I honestly believe that because that's a breaking ball. That ball broke above the letters and broke behind him, and he called strike three on it. I think he felt like he missed that pitch, the pitch before. And now you need Jackson to come up with a big knock right here. Clough steps in. Here's the pitch. And that is a fastball on the outside corner for strike one. 110 pitches now. I don't think Clough liked that call either as he steps back in. Clough's had good success against lefties this year, going right back up the middle. Here's the 0-1. Clough takes a curveball over for call strike two. Now you just have to battle. Two strikes, just battle. That's amazing. Grant really hasn't let those two errors bother him too much as he's thrown... Very well to Hale and so far here to Clough. And that pitch is up high for a ball. Yeah, I mean, you got two big errors, and then you're facing the best two hitters in the lineup, and you execute your best pitches. Two of the better players in the league, probably co-MVP candidates for the regular season. Clough fouls that one off. Had a good look at that one. Had a good hack at it and just fouled it off. Nice single up the middle right here. Cougars have scored two runs in the inning on two hits. Lead-off home run by Jacobson. Double by Jelich and then two consecutive errors. And here's the one-two, and Clough fouls another one off out of play. Big strikeout right there was a Brock Hill with one man out. Runner at third base. Boy, you put that ball in play. Anywhere, you know, in the air, and you're probably going to score your third run. Yeah. So Jackson Clough steps back in. Here's the pitch, and Clough swings and misses, goes down on strikes. Two big strikeouts there by Grant. In the sixth inning for the Cougars, they did get two runs on two hits. Two errors and two runners and left on base. We're through BYU five and a half, four two. Santa Clara over BYU on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Baseball, let's rejoin Brent Norton. Well, the Cougars get on the board. They score two on a home run and then an unearned run in the sixth. Popped up by Jack. Jake McNichols, second baseman uh, Matthews, calling everybody off, and he makes the catch for out number one. Well, Jordan Wood has battled in this uh, ball game. That's just his 86th pitch as we play the bottom of the sixth. I think uh, Russell Grant's about 110 now. Interesting to see if they run him back out there. As he struck out both uh, both Hale and uh, Clough, I never would have believed it. Pitches uh, outside for ball one. Got to give Grant a lot of credit. 
Yeah, baseball's a crazy game. Co-MVP candidates up there in big spots, put a ball in play, and back-to-back punch outs. Pitch to McCarthy, a swing and a miss. Ryan McCarthy, two for two. He had the grand slam in the first, singled in the third inning. San Jose Airport just here over the left field wall, as you can see the planes coming and going. Here's the 1-1 pitch to McCarthy, and that is outside for a ball. 4-2 the score. Santa Clara leading BYU as we are in the bottom of the sixth inning. And here's the 2-1 pitch. Ball grounded foul down the third baseline. 11 base runners to their two base runners that we've left on this game. How about that? That's the difference. Had a chance to score in every inning. Just, yeah, just haven't had, been able to get it. Yeah, haven't been able to. Boy, and, and, uh, and prime even, example is the last inning. Yeah, and even after a couple of errors, when you're just set up for a huge inning, your best two guys go down. That's baseball sometimes. It's a crazy sport. Pitch just missed inside. The problem, Brent, is you're running out of outs. Yep. Offensively, you've got nine to play with now, and you're down two now. So you're back in this game, but got to keep putting up zeros and find a way to get another big hit. 3-2. Ball hit into left field. Base hit. McIntyre over. Picks it up and gets it back in. One out single by McCarthy. He is three for three in the ball game. He came in hitting at 222 on the year. Ryan McCarthy, when you look at his uh, stat line, 171 at bats, 38 hits. He's got three tonight, 11 doubles, three home runs, and now 20 RBIs. He had struck out uh, 52 times coming into the game. As Gavin Maloney steps in, the DH freshman out of Roswell, New Mexico, he has struck out twice to Jordan Wood. First pitch, fastball on the inside corner for a strike. Yeah, and if you can throw that location, he's got no chance of hitting it because he crowds that plate like anyone I've ever seen. He is, he's got his back foot on the line to the point of he's almost over the line and had to be moved back his last at bat. Six strikeouts by Wood during uh, tonight's outing. Oh, one pitch is just off the plate, a ball and a strike. Can't see either bullpen. Uh, from our vantage point, we can just see the corner of the bull of the Cougars bullpen down the third baseline. Can't tell what's going on, in Santa Clara. The runner going. Here comes the throw down and. They're going to throw out the base runner, Ryan McCarthy. Yeah, hit and run right there. Good job. That's the best throw of the night by Noah right there. Two men out. One and two the count to Maloney. As the left-hander will step back in. And there's a curveball. Checked his swing. Did not go. Yeah, good job by the umpire right there. He did not go. I agree with him on that. Two balls and two strikes, the count. Boeto do up next. Cougars 34 wins, 14 losses on the year. Mm. There's a fastball. Oh Thought he had him struck out. Same pitch he got called for a strike early in the count. Yeah, you don't see Jordan Wood walking off the mound very often to try to show up an umpire unless he believes it's a strike. Three and two. Here's Woods' pitch. Ball line foul. Out of play, and the uh, count room will remain at three and two. This uh, Santa Clara team, 221 batting average. Only scored 182 runs this year. Comparison to the Cougars, 342. 
Cougars have 130 more hits than Santa Clara coming in. Where's There's that pitch? Curve ball that um, must have been up a little bit high. Ruben Candelari didn't like either of those last two pitches. He's, that's the same curveball that Brock Hill was called strike three on. Unless that stayed outside, it, from this vantage point, it looked good. Two men out, runner at first base, and Boeto comes in. Catcher, Tony Boeto. Boeto, a sophomore out of La Quinta, California. As he will step in from the right-handed side in the first pitch, curve ball over for a strike. Cougars have a slugging percentage of just about 100 points higher than Santa Clara. So you got your best offensive team in the league versus the, your worst offensive team in the league. But Santa Clara has given all the Cougars can handle here so far in this ball game. Here's Woods' 0-1 pitch. Just inside for a ball. Yeah, just one of those crazy games, Brent, where they got one big swing in the first inning to put up four, and then the Cougs have left 11 runners on with a chance to crawl back in. Ball on a strike. Woods uh, now up to 102 pitches. Pitches high and tight. Ball two. So two balls and a strike, two men out, runner at first base. Broncos with a two-run lead. And here is Wood from the stretch. And the 2-1 pitch hit pretty well down the left field line, but that's going to hook foul. Yeah, hung that one. Fortunate there, he got out in front and pulled it foul. So Boeto, a long foul ball. And Connor Hendricks is uh, the next batter due up with a 2-2 count and two men out. Wood, uh, the long look in at uh, Noah Hill. Now he's got the sign. And the 2-2 pitch. That ball gets away from Noah Hill, and the runner will advance to second base. A curveball that just bounced up and off of uh, Noah shin guard. Yeah, Noah went to block it, but it took a weird bounce, and it ended up hitting his high knee and ricocheting the other way. It's a big bounce there because now you have a big run at second here with two outs, and a knock will extend this lead back up to three. Need to need to have a big pitch right here if you're if you're Wood. Find a way to put up another zero. Keep giving your offense a chance to get back in this game. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Boeto. Here's the pitch. Ball fouled straight back. Everyone with a heater right there. Cougars got a couple in the top half of the inning to cut the deficit to 4-2. And trying to put another zero up on the board here for Santa Clara as they've been uh, shut out since the first inning when they got their four. Now Boeto uh, steps out. Cougars will play the Broncos two more times this weekend before starting the conference action next Thursday in Stockton. There's a ball hit up the middle. Carson Matthews has him played perfectly. Throws him out for the out. Nice job. And that will do it for the Broncos in the inning. No runs, hits, or errors. One man left. We're through six complete. 4-2. Broncos leading the Cougars on your new skin, BYU Sports Network. 